Another colligative property is osmosis. Osmosis is the flow of solvent from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated solution. Osmosis happens when you have um, high concentration and low concentration in proximity to each other, and the high concentration solution draws the solvent into it. We need a picture. This is why you shouldn't drink seawater if you're ever stranded on the ocean. So here's your intestine, and inside your intestine you have, um, let's see, which direction are we looking at? So this is the seawater that you swallowed, and this is inside of you. Yes, mm -hmm. outside the intestine. Have you ever thought that actually inside your stomach, your esophagus, your intestines, that's actually the outside of your body? Because <laughs> it's like a tube that goes through you, right? It's like the inside of a donut, you know, it's the whole part, right? So it's not really inside your body. Your intestines really aren't inside. So this is in your intestines. And this is inside your cells. Your cells have a ver are very particular about the concentration of sodium and chloride ions that they want. If you drink salty water, these membranes will allow water to pass through, but generally not the sodium and the chloride and, and sugar and other larger molecules like that. And so the water in this lower concentration is going to flow into the solution that has a higher concentration. And there's a couple of different ways of explaining that. Um, I think the most simplistic, easiest to understand is that nature seems to be trying to level everything out, right? Water always just levels out. It doesn't have peaks and bumps in it, not, not permanently. It, it wants to be level. Everything is going to flow to the lowest. And so nature is trying to get these concentrations to be the same. If you take two solutions, let me draw a picture. Let's say you have an aquarium with a divider in the middle. And here you've got salt water, and here you've got pure water. And you pull that divider out. Is the salt water going to stay on its side and the pure water going to stay on its side? They're going to mix, aren't they? It's just a natural tendency. It's actually called entropy. But it's a, it's a, bit, a general principle of science that mixing will occur. And so here, that mixing is going to attempt to occur, but this semi-permeable membrane, the wall of your intestine, keeps the sodium and chloride ions, it keeps the solutes from moving, but it allows the solvent to move. So the solvent moves over here in an effort to dilute this solution and get them to the same concentration. We can see this happen in um, what I always think of as a U-tube. You know, that was before Y-O-U, Tube. This is a U-shaped tube, and so we call them U-tubes, and now, now we have to call them U-shaped tubes. Um, but here, a U-shaped tube with a semi-permeable membrane in it. Put pure water on one side, put salty water on the other side, and wait. There is an equilibrium that is going to occur. We have two opposite processes. Water moving from the right to the left, water moving from the left to the right. The solute can't move through the membrane. And what's going to happen is water is going to move from the left to the right more than the other way, and the, the, the level of liquid on this side is actually going to rise up, which is not what we expect to happen, right? That doesn't just spontaneously happen. And it would never happen if we didn't have the membrane here and two different concentrations. But because we do, the water will move to the other side in an effort to dilute this solution. It will not go all the way over and become completely dry on this side, though, 
because as it's rising up here, it's creating a difference in pressure. When we talked about gases, we talked about J tubes and, and different shaped tubes where the difference in the heights of the liquid corresponded to a difference in pressure. This will go up to a certain height and that difference there is called the osmotic pressure. If you make the solution more concentrated, the osmotic pressure is larger and the solution will rise higher. Another way to think of osmotic pressure is it's the amount of pressure you would have to apply to this side of the tube to get that water to go back down, to force it into the other side. That's the uh, principle behind a reverse osmosis water filtration system. Water wants to flow from the pure side to the impure side. By putting pressure on here, you can cause osmosis to flow in the reverse direction and you can get pure water out. And that's how reverse osmosis works. Any questions? Osmotic pressure is a colligative property. It depends on the number of particles, not on what they are. More particles, more osmotic pressure. This has um, a great impact um, in medicine because bodies are full of semi-permeable membranes and so you have to be careful what you expose uh, those cells to. If you put a living cell into seawater, it's going to lose water through osmosis and become dehydrated. Your blood has red blood cells, right? This is uh, um, an electron micrograph, I believe, of normal red blood cells. They're, they kind of have this donut-y shape. Um, if you put red blood cells in pure water, the red blood cells have a certain concentration of solutes inside of them. Sodium and potassium ions and other things that are dissolved in the fluid inside the cell. If you put it in pure water, the water flows to the more concentrated solution. And so the red blood cells will swell. And if you leave them in there long enough, they'll burst. Which can be useful if you're trying to wash blood out of your sweatshirt or something. Hopefully you just cut yourself on a thorn and you didn't kill someone. But you know, if you're wanting to wash blood out of something, if you soak it in water, the cells will burst. It makes it much easier to get the blood out of something. If you put red blood cells into a salty solution, it will draw the water out of them, and this is called crenation, and they get all shriveled up, and then they're not going to work very well either. So isotonic is the word for a solution that has the same solute concentration as what is found inside the cell. So if you're getting an IV fluid for some reason, you want that fluid to be isotonic so that it's not going to cause your red blood cells either to inflate and blow up or to shrivel up. You want it to be the same. Hypotonic means, hypo means low, so lower concentration, it'll cause things to swell up. Hypertonic means it's got more dissolved solids, dissolved solutes, and will cause this to happen. Any questions?